Hey everyone, Chef Dick Peters Bond here, and this is Commanding Your Kitchen. On today's episode, we're combining two of my favorite things, fried rice and coconut green curry, and we're combining them together. This recipe was inspired because I had just been craving this green curry sauce that I recently had in a restaurant, and it was of course on mussels, which that's like a classic thing on mussels now. I feel like that's the new classic, like white wine used to be like a classic thing, and now I feel like every restaurant has like some sort of green coconut green curry type of vibe. So I'm, I'm all here for it. So tonight we're taking coconut milk and green curry and mixing it with fried rice. How are we gonna do that? Stick around to find out. <laughs> if you like videos like this and you like me, please subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to be notified when I post videos, I tend to post them every Thursday, please click the notification bell. It looks like a bell like being shook. Okay. <laughs> I can't with myself sometimes. Okay, <laughs> so please give this video a big thumbs up and like it, share it, comment, spam me. I love all of it. I appreciate all the comments and love. Also, if you're interested in a big, well, to me, it's a big giveaway. I don't want to put it down already, but a giveaway, wait till the end. There is a giveaway announcement um, that I'm running with my YouTube channel and my Instagram because I'm really close to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which I'm really excited about and thankful for. And on Instagram, I'm close to hitting 30,000. So it would be awesome for you all to enter and I'll go over that more at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's start on our, our, our coconut white rice and the marinade for the chicken thighs. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to do is marinate our chicken thighs because that's what takes the longest in this recipe. So we're going to take about half a cup of coconut, um, coconut milk using full fat coconut milk. The other remaining of the can is going to be used for the rice. So it's about a half a cup of coconut milk. I'm going to throw in some green curry paste to go in here, as well as our sauce. You're also going to put a little bit of sesame oil. And this just kind of brings that back to the fried rice vibes, but still keeping it in the, you know, green curry family. It's kind of like a mashup. A little bit of soy sauce, I would say mm, a quarter cup. The full amount of this are going to be on my Patreon page, so I will, when I write the recipe for this, I'll be more specific on there. Some sriracha. And then you're going to whisk this together. All these flavors in here are really just going to carry over into the full dish. So we're making coconut rice. There's coconut in here. We're making a green curry sauce with green curry in here. So it's going to be similar ingredients in the... I'm going to be using similar ingredients in the sauce portion. Okay, so we are going to put the chicken thighs that we had diced up and threw into our marinade in the refrigerator covered for about no less than 30 minutes. You could go up to probably two to three hours on this. Now that our chicken thighs are marinating, we're going to start our rice. It's going to be one cup of water and one cup of the coconut milk. So that's the remaining can that we had from our marinade. And so with, oops. So with rice, you're going to want to do a two to one ratio of two parts liquid, one part rice. I'm just adding a heavy size pinch of salt in there. And then once this comes up to a boil, we'll add our rice in, cover it and let it simmer. So whenever I make like a green coconut curry, I always, I sometimes I make it um, vegetarian and I always end up using sweet potato. And I've done this actually before in a restaurant where I did a coconut green curry and then we had, um, it was sweet potatoes and roasted corn and it was, it was so good. Um, so for a sweet potato this size, for you at home, I would cut it in half. Sometimes it's just, too, it's just too much. And then this way you have an easier time at just cutting down slices of sweet potato and then you're going to cut it into little, like little stick sized and then you're going to dice it from there i think even Amberell has some funny chant you can do to that slices sticks dices i don't know comment if you guys have seen that <laughs> so you just take it and take each i'm not going to be concerned about like the end and stuff i know that professional chefs trim off the end and all this other nonsense but i'm cooking this at, for my house this isn't like <laughs> And I also would never have my chef cut it, it's just a waste. So anyways, that's my rant. But cut it into little sticks and then dice it. And this is just one sweet potato. So 
the recipe is about, I think it was about a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken thighs. And then once you trim them, it ends up being obviously a little less once you trim, you know, some of like the fat off and stuff, um, which you don't have to do. Um, and then it's one sweet potato. And so this, this dish, and I use a cup of rice, which obviously expands. So this dish ends up serving about four people. You have like a nice little salad beforehand or something. I think you guys would be set for four people for dinner, four adults. Okay, so I'm gonna finish cutting this up. You guys get the gist of me dicing a sweet potato. And then I'm gonna come back and show you what else we're gonna throw in there. All right, so now that I have all my sweet potatoes diced, I'm gonna go ahead and par cook these. And that's just because these take a long time to cook. You can throw them in the microwave in a bowl with just a little bit of water and cook them just maybe for about three minutes just to par cook them. You could blanch them and shock them. So you can put them into some boiling salted water and you could drain them and put them into an ice bath if you ice bath if you want to. I'm just going to pop these in the microwave today. So I'm also going to throw in a um, little bit of eggplant. Now you could get like really cute um, Japanese eggplant or they have like Thumbelina eggplant or whatever. I'm just getting this is your run-of-the-mill eggplant. That's totally fine. It's going to be diced up so it's not necessarily going to be like on display. So if you're at home obviously just cut your eggplant in half like I just did just like the sweet potato and you can use a peeler or you can go around the sides with a knife and just peel off all the skin and so I'm going to finish doing this I'm going to dice them just like we did the sweet potatoes and we'll be right back so we are going to be adding a little bit of like a sauce kind of soy sauce green curry situation because typically in fried rice soy sauce is added a decent amount of it but I'm going to kind of do a little bit of soy sauce and then a little bit of the coconut green curry. So I'm gonna fortify the green curry paste that I have store bought. You can make this on your own. There's just a lot of stuff in it. Um, so be prepared if you're gonna buy, you might not have all the stuff on hand. There's like shrimp paste and all sorts of stuff in there. Um, okay, so for lemongrass, I tend to first down here, I would say from here down is where it's really more meatier. Um, the top part as you can hear is very brittle so sometimes i'll just even take this off depending on what i'm doing it for if it's kind of like woody looking and then you get to this part and this like if you're gonna just fortify a uh, sauce that's what i'm doing you can just take the back of your knife and kind of just like whack it and that kind of just like releases the, the oils in there and you can see it kind of just breaks open give it a good like that and then this would be perfect to go into a stock or whatever just to release some of its flavor. So that's going to go into our sauce. Um, we are also going to add in some ginger. I'm not going to bother peeling this, worrying about it. I'm just going to slice a few pieces up and I'm just going to put it right into the sauce. So that's probably like a little inch of ginger, that one little piece. And so I'm going to put this into the sauce as well as some jalapeno. This is optional. You could use serrano chili. You could use something else. but. I, I love jalapenos and I'm just gonna do a few little pieces for the, the broth. I don't want this to be too spicy. Plus I'm gonna be garnishing with uh, additional jalapeno. Okay, so into the saucepan I put our ginger, lemongrass, and the jalapeno we just cut, as well as some um, coconut milk and some green curry paste. And I did a little bit of fish sauce just to kind of season it. So this is essentially acting as salt in this. This is optional. You could also, I did a little bit of soy sauce. You could also do a little bit more soy sauce instead of the fish sauce and a few drops of the sriracha. So I'm gonna whisk this on the stove, cook it for like 10 minutes, strain it. And if I have to thin it with a little bit of water or something like that, that's totally fine too, depending on how thick some coconut milk can be really thick before it's cooked. But I'll come back and check on this and we'll let this simmer on the stove. Okay. So we're gonna start cooking our fried rice now. Our rice has been cooked and it's cooling. Our sauce is on simmer. We have our sweet potatoes that are partially cooked. Our eggplant. We're also going to add in some shelled edamame. You could use peas, but I just felt like using these because I saw these and that would be really nice in this dish. And then some scallions. I am going to just mostly use the tops for the specific recipe, but you could obviously use a lot more. You could use the white part too. I. I'm on some weird diet thing. I'm trying to avoid the white. <laughs> it's, anyways, you can use the whole thing. You can use the onion if you have onion. You don't have to necessarily just use scallions, but we're gonna save some of these for garnish and some of them for just to throw in right at the end and then we'll top with some more. You could either go across like this. You could be really fancy and do like on the bias kind of cuts for the garnish. 
and then for the top you could easily do or excuse me for the top and the garnish and then just when we mix them in you could easily just slice them like this whichever you prefer i think that's probably the way to go i'm going to go is slice a few of these for the rice itself and then a few of them for the garnish so I'll continue to do that and then i'm also going to be adding in um some snow peas so the vegetables that we're using are not necessarily classic vegetables in one way or the other but it's they've been used in both obviously but i'm excited for the different textures we have going on with the sweet potato that's a little more obviously potato texture we have the chicken that's a little bit you know that's gonna be so tender once that's marinated the eggplant the edamame the snap peas the scallions these are all things that are really going to add so much flavor and texture and if anything the you know the vegetable just adds some brightness too and i love i love snow peas so we're going to be adding some snow peas in and i think that's it for veggies that's it i mean that's like a, it's a bunch of stuff but I think this is almost kind of like a what's in my refrigerator fried rice. Bec I keep mixing them together. <laughs> I'm gabbing with the camera. I'm like losing my mind. Okay. So, I mean, it's kind of, I say that because I feel like a lot of people have frozen peas, frozen vegetables. They have even canned stuff. Not that I'm, you know, not that I say go out and buy canned vegetables, but if you have that at your house and you don't have access to fresh vegetables, this is something you can totally do on a very tight budget. Chicken thighs are very inexpensive. I think that whole... Ooh, I almost lost my edamame. I think that whole pack of chicken thighs know, was like four bucks. And then rice is so inexpensive. And then you can use whatever vegetables you have. Don't feel like you have to use these, but this is just what I'm using today. And what I like the combination together. <laughs> All right, so I got my scallions to cook with. I think I need to sharpen my knife. And then I have my scallions that I slice on the bias. So we're going to head over to the, uh, the stove. And we're going to start our fried rice and check on our sauce. All right, so obviously I'm starting with our chicken. That's our raw ingredient that hasn't been, anything has been cooked yet, but it's been marinating for a half an hour right now. I would say push it to an hour if you can. Don't worry if some marinade gets on the pan. I'm just straining some off with the slotted spoon. And I would say do this in batches. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. So cook this on medium, medium low, just until it gets some color and it starts to cook through. And then we'll remove it and we'll go from there. Now I have all my prep kind of over here. The thing that will take the longest for the vegetables is going to be the sweet potatoes, even though they are par cooked, I just, they're gonna wanna cook a little bit more. That was the oil again, I just used a neutral oil. Well, mine's flavor, but you don't have to use a flavored oil. And, by the way, if you guys are interested in this pan, I've used this in a bunch of videos. It's called Wax and Wear. I love it, and I can put the link for that down below if you guys are interested in having like a nice small non-stick saute pan that you can use for a bunch of different stuff. It's really versatile, at least for me it is. Um, as you can see, I've used it a bunch, but yeah. Anyways, I digress. So sweet potatoes go in, and I drain those from the liquid that they've cooked in. And even though we are adding, um, you know, salt by soy sauce via soy sauce I guess and the paste I'm just gonna season the vegetables themselves I always do salt and pepper for huge and I'm gonna let these go for just a couple of minutes and then I'm going to add in the eggplant because that's the next thing <laughs> and then that would take the longest and then I'm going to add back in our chicken and yeah yeah, yeah. I'm spiraling I'm just gabbing to you guys at this point all right so we're gonna let this saute for about two to three minutes. So I added in a splash of water just to kind of help move things along with the potatoes. I guess I would cook them for maybe like closer to five minutes prior, but either, or you could just add a, a splash of water like I did just to help kind of steam them and finish cooking them. Okay, so at this stage in the game, we can probably put back in our chicken. Turn on the heat just a little. And then I'm going to add in our edamame, our snow peas and our scallions. These don't need a ton of cooking time. That's kind of why I'm adding them now.
Okay, and then we're going to add in our rice. And we're gonna incorporate all the rice and turn the heat up a little bit because I really wanna get the bottom of the pan and the rice to get a little bit of color and get a little crispy before we add in our sauce. So my husband and I found out that this rice we really love, it's called Regal Harvest. It's basically, it's a basmati rice, but you can now get it at Costco. It's a lot of like restaurants use it. Um, as you can see, it comes out like literally, I would say perfect every time we've cooked it. It doesn't clump, the flavor is good. Yeah, I really like it. This, that's not a link or anything like that. It's just a specific product that we have been using that they sent me a bag of rice and I've been literally using it all the time. So we're gonna turn this up just a little bit. Now that the rice is in there and we're gonna try and get some color on some of the rice and kind of crisp that up a little bit. All right, as you can hear the crackling of the pan, that's the rice crisping up and toasting up at the bottom. Give us a quick little stir and then we are going to strain in our green curry coconut sauce. So we're gonna turn this down now that we've gotten a little bit of crunch there and then we're going to strain in our sauce. So this had the lemongrass and ginger and all that good stuff. And this is basically being added in replace of just soy sauce or you know just sesame oil or whatever the case may be in like your fried rice recipes. And this just kind of just, you know, it just switches it up a little bit. All right. And if you're, you know, feeding kids, you don't have to do you could do the same exact recipe and just omit the jalapeno and that kind of thing. All right, stir that all up. It's pretty much almost ready to serve. I'm gonna fry a couple of eggs to put on top and then chop up some kimchi maybe, have all the garnishes available, but this is pretty much it. It looks so good. All right. Let me give this a little taste. Let me give this a little taste for seasoning. Mm. It's really good. All right. Turn this off. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of sriracha. This is optional if you have kids, you don't have to do it a tiny bit of more of soy sauce, just for a little bit more salt. Our scallions right on top. And there you go, that looks so good. All right guys, so that concludes today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you like a little weeknight meal inspiration for a dinner, even weekend and not, we still really aren't going out too much, but things are starting to get a little bit better. But this is something you can definitely make for a weeknight dinner for your kids, for your loved ones, whoever it may be. Omit the spice, add as much spice as you want, swap out the vegetables. Really, as long as you have like your protein, your rice, and then some sort of vegetables, I mean, it's, it's gonna be good. It really, really is gonna be good no matter what you do, within reason. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, oh, my big giveaway. I'm space brain. so. I have the Hell's Kitchen cookbook in which my lovely face is in at one point in one of the pages. And I'm gonna sign that page and I'm gonna be doing a giveaway of my cookbook that I received when I was on Hell's Kitchen and I'm gonna be giving it to one of you lovely people. So what you have to do to enter, I'm gonna post basically the same message on Instagram is to like my, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to me on YouTube, and then just comment or like on that picture. You don't have to add, you can share it as much as you want and you can tag other people. That would count towards like a bonus, but subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and then just like or comment or whatever the case may be on that picture, which I'm gonna post or video I'm gonna post on Thursday as well, the day that this video drops. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think the cookbook's are a great cookbook to begin with. It gives you an inside to Hell's Kitchen, especially people who are a fan of the show. It's not just about me, it's about, you know, it's the whole kind of the whole show, so. It's just my face happens to be on one of the pages in the corner, barely seen, but still in it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, you got this. I also just wanted to give a quick shout out to Phil Ward. Thank you for subscribing to my Patreon. 
at my top tier. I very much appreciate that. And with that, he gets one-on-one -on -one chat with me, early access to recipes, can give me inside input to any of my videos and things that he might want to see, etc., etc. So head over onto Patreon and I'll list my other patrons, Patreon people down below. Thank you guys so much again for subscribing to my Patreon. So if you're curious about that and getting early access to my recipes, you can check it down below.